For this final case, it's not going to be so much of a single case, but it's going to be a quick review of gyral anatomy within the brain. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a single slice or an image uh, through the brain. There are some numbered arrows, and I want you to follow along as we try to name them. So these are the gyri of the frontal lobes. So what you're looking at is a flare image, a chronal image through the frontal lobe. So your first structure here, so go ahead and try to come up with that name. So that's the superior frontal gyrus. And then as you move laterally here, this one is the middle frontal gyrus. And finally, you have the inferior frontal gyrus is the most inferior of the uh, major frontal gyri. Two labeled structures here. This one I've labeled a bit generically. Now this is the orbital gyri. In this case, this is the medial orbital gyrus, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. And this final one is the gyrus rectus. So if we take a look at the axial uh, through the portions of the inferior frontal lobe, immediately superior to the orbit, then these are the orbital gyri and they have individual names. So just think about those as, they're, uh, as we go through them. Uh, so this one is the medial orbital gyrus. So that's the one that's most medial. This is the anterior orbital gyrus. So it's anterior here and you have this little H kind of shape sulcus here. Then laterally, you have the lateral orbital gyrus, and then, as they are intuitively named, you have the posterior orbital gyrus, uh, most posteriorly there. Uh, so here's just a sample. Uh, this is from Gray's Anatomy. You can see these different orbital gyri as they're labeled. So they're labeled very intuitively, so it's easy to remember. Now here, we've come up a little bit higher, and we're looking at both the frontal and parietal gyri in the axial plane as we're a little bit higher. Now if these are red, I'm asking you to tell me what the name of the gyrus is. If it's blue, I want you to tell me what the sulcus is. So walk through these and we're just going to go through them together. So number one here, this is called the paracentral lobule. It's uh, the little gyrus that connects the precentral and postcentral gyrus. This is uh, sort of the lateral portions of the precentral sulcus or the inferior frontal gyrus. Here you have the middle frontal gyrus, and here you have the superior frontal gyrus. So these again are the same ones that you see on the coronal image, but uh, they're on the axial image here. Now, if you're here, this is number five. We talked about it a little bit. That's the precentral gyrus. So that's the motor cortex. This is the central sulcus, which is the sulcus that divides the precentral gyrus from this final structure which is the post-central gyrus, which is your primary sensory cortex. Now we'll move to the coronal visualization of the temporal lobe. Again, these structures are named uh, starting medially here and then uh, rotating around. So this one right here is the parahippocampal gyrus, which makes sense because it's closest to the hippocampus. Now again, in blue, we have a sulcus here. This is a named sulcus that you should probably know. This one is the collateral sulcus. And then the next gyrus that you're dealing with is the fusiform gyrus. And then these three, much like the frontal lobe, are very intuitively named. It's the inferior, middle, and superior temporal gyri. So those are named one, two, three, very similar to the frontal lobes. Finally, I'm going to show you a midline image, and we'll just go through some of these structures. Now, it looks like there's a lot here, but if you kind of go through them uh, simply, then it's relatively easy. Again, the blue are sulci and the red are the gyri. So this one, one here is the, this sulcus right here is a cingulate sulcus. Now the gyrus that you see adjacent to the midline here in number two, in this part of the frontal lobe is a superior frontal gyrus. So you're seeing it just a little bit off of the midline. Now here, this arrow is referring to this gyrus right here, just above the corpus callosum. If this is the cingulate sulcus, then that's going to be the cingulate gyrus. So that's uh, relatively easy. And then number four here is you get a little bit further back. Again, you have your paracentral lobule. So that's the portion of the brain that's right uh, connecting the uh, pre and post central gyri. Now here I'm pointing to this little sulcus here. That's the central sulcus, which you don't really see completely there. And then here, this is uh, sulcus that connects to the cingulate sulcus. 
and that's the marginal ramus of the cingulate sulcus so that kind of makes sense it makes this hockey stick uh, sort of thing this gyrus is the in the parietal lobe adjacent to the midline here this is the precuneus which is part of the parietal lobe here you have a sulcus which divides the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe or the parieto occipital sulcus now this one you don't really name that often but if you have a precuneus it's easy to think of the name for this then you have a cuneus so that's part of the occipital lobe here you have one uh, little sulcus here that's the calcarine fissure and then finally your last gyrus here is the lingual gyrus so just remember as you're studying for your test uh, that basic anatomy is really fair game uh, the major cell sign gyri you want to know them and the major vessels i think you want to know as well veins i think are fair game as well but most on most of these neuroradiology tests the degree of anatomy you're going to be asked about is a pretty large scale anatomy you're probably not going to be asked about really obscure structures Thanks for checking out this board review. This uh, brings us to the end of these 20 cases. Uh, be sure to check back for more later and we'll have more cases and uh, more videos for you guys.